Yes, what we will talk about today? Today we will talk about eggs, but not any type of eggs. I'm not talking about your backyard chicken egg. I'm talking about your backyard trout egg. Look at this lovely product that you can harvest from your aquaponic system. Hey, welcome in this video. Today we'll see how to make trout caviar. So if you have trout in your aquaponic system, you probably harvest them where they are a portion size, which is around 250 grams. And for that, you will need only probably nine months. But if you want to grow them a bit bigger, if you want to keep them longer, after one year, the male are going to maturate. The male are going to start to produce some sperm. The female, however, the females, so it will take a bit more time to maturate. A female trout, rainbow trout we are talking about, is taking two years to maturate and that's the case with most salmonids. Uh, here I got uh, golden rainbow trout, I got classic rainbow trout and I got brook trout which we call freshwater salmon. I got all those spaces here. When they reach two years, they maturate. So you will be able to harvest the eggs of those, of those fish, of the females and they are excellent to eat. We call them trout caviar very often, but the reality is caviar is a, is a word that should be normally uh, used for only sturgeon eggs. Myself, I prefer rainbow trout caviar, rainbow trout eggs, or even salmon eggs. The quality is very similar between the two. I prefer the taste over the sturgeon caviar, but that's just my perspective. Everyone has got different tastes. Huh? So today I will show you how to harvest those eggs. If you have some fish uh, in your backyard, in your aquaponic system, or even if you have a dam and you have trout, I want to show you how to harvest the fish without damaging uh, the fish. You want to do it uh, safely for the fish. So to do that, I use a cage. You see, I have a cage here. It's a floating cage. And that's where I will, I will catch the fish and I will put the fish that are much mature in the cage. So how do you know when a fish is mature? It's when, when you catch a female, you can see um, the anal orifice that is coming out. That's when the female is starting to be mature. And then you just need to give it a little massage. So you hold the tail. If you are right, uh, right hand, you will hold the tail by the left hand. And very often I recommend to get a wet cloth, put it on the tail, and that's gonna give you a very good grip on the fish. And then you will slowly, very gently, um, give the trout a massage. So we call it stripping. That's where you try to expose, to, to eject the eggs. It's not really the eggs, to be honest, because to be called an egg, it needs to be fertilized. So it's the ovule. And it's not even an ovule, it's a novocyte, just before becoming an ovule. So you will try to reject it, to eject it. You give a massage to the fish. And uh, if the fish is mature, you will see some eggs going out. So you will take those fish and you will put them in your cage. So then you know that all the fish that are in the cage, they are ready to, to be used. Um, so that's what I do uh, for my trout. And uh, right now we will catch one and we'll start to strip it. I will show you how you eject the eggs. So in terms of equipment, you have your fish there. You will need um, a place to put them when you get them out of the water because you want to remove you don't want the water you don't want the the, the other seats that you're going to collect the eggs you don't want them to be in contact with the water yeah so when you put your fish in a bucket it will hold the fish and it will kind of let the water drain out of the fish so what i do i just have a, a bucket that is quite deep so if the fish jumps it's not going to jump out and what i put i put a piece of neoprene which is a that's an old wetsuit that I use, but you can use anything, it's a foam, you want a foam, because the fish is going to move, you don't want the fish to damage itself on, um, on the bucket, especially on the bottom of the bucket, while this is very soft, and this is a uh, 5 millimeters, so it's 10 millimeters altogether, uh, the fish has got one centimeter of foam to play with, and it's not going to hurt it, itself, and that's very important, because the fish you have, of course, you want to keep them in the best conditions possible, right? you want to you respect the fish. Putting the fish in, in this type of uh, bucket is going to help the fish to be there. It's going to be very agitated at the beginning. I actually recommend to do it by night if you can. For the video, it's better to do it by day, but by night the fish are more calm. Uh, just, just for you to know, I used to work uh, in a fish hatchery and we used to collect a lot of uh, fish eggs. Uh, 
in a fish, fish hatchery, because you've got a lot of fish, we use, um, um, we use a molecule to, to, to put the fish asleep. So that's when you, when you move them, when you collect the eggs, the fish don't move. The fish doesn't move. Here, uh, it's not the case. Here, we are, we are working with uh, fish that are alive and they will, they will move. So try to be gentle. Um, as I said before, you use, a, use a, a cloth. So generally you want a, a cloth that is wet. It's better for the fish. And uh, I use an old t-shirt. And I will put the t-shirt on my hand and grab the fish by the tail. And that will give me a, a really good grip to eject the oversits from the fish. So you will also need a stainer. And the stainer needs to be clean but dry. You don't want any water in the stainer, yeah? So what you need to understand is that the, the eggs, when they touch the water, they change completely the, the external membrane. So it's, called, it's what we call the micro pill, and it closes in contact with water. So what you want is when you collect them, you collect them in a stainer, and this stainer is completely dry and clean. So when you put the egg inside, you can eat them. To eat them, we need to add some salt. But if you want to um, breed them, you have them without water, and then you will add the sperm into it, and then you can add the water. There is a whole process to do. Um, but the thing is, when you collect the eggs, always in a stainer, without any water. So now, let's catch some fish. Actually, we got a, a nice rainbow trout, very nice size actually. And now I hold the tail. You can see, you can see the anal gonad and you can see the egg is there, ready to be ejected. You see it really well here. We can see the egg actually. If I push a little bit, the egg is going to go out. It's going to come out. So here it's very simple. I just need to give it a little massage and I got all the eggs coming out. See how simple it is? So just to be clear, um, when you collect the eggs, one, a trout is going to give you 1,500 to 300 eggs per kilo, per kilo of fish. So the fish I have in my hands is close to, I'm not sure, 1.5 to 2 kg. So I can have up to 6,000 eggs in this fish. If you keep the fish a bit bigger, this is a two years fish, right? This fish is two years. If you keep it for three years, the eggs will be even bigger. So as you understand, the fish here is not briefing yet. So we need to be pretty quick when we do that. We can't take too long, otherwise the fish will die. Very often when you, you reject the fish into the water, into the pond, the fish doesn't look really good at the beginning, but it's a bit of time for it to recover, but they will recover. Now I let the fish go, slowly. It's gone. It's here. You can see they look fantastic. So if you need to collect anything, normally you can use either your fingers, if they are dry, you can use um, a dry plastic spoon or uh, a feather. A lot of people use a feather. 
So here, if we look at the eggs, we can see most of them are good. Some of them, you can see there is a spot in the middle. They are not good. I don't know if you can really see the difference in the camera, but you can see some eggs where inside you can't see anything. They are all diffused and some eggs where there is a dot. See, that's a fair bit of, of, uh, of eggs, right? So then you can transfer the eggs in the bowl. And now I could fertilize those eggs, but what I will do, I will uh, prepare them and we will consume them. Very good to eat. So now we got different techniques. Um, some people like to drop um, the eggs into a solution of water, salt and sugar. If you do that, you need to be aware that um, you're going to form the micro peel, you know this this envelope that is around the egg is going to become very thick. And so the texture of the egg is going to be different. If you want it to be very soft, you need to not put the, the, uh, the eggs in contact with the water, uh, or you can put them in contact with the water, but not too long. What I like to do, which is very simple, extremely simple, is just to put the egg in the stainer, as you can see here. See the eggs, they are really lovely. Put them in a stainer and then you just add your normal table, table salt on it, grind it. So here you want it to be slightly salty, right? You don't want it to be, uh, to be blend, especially if you are in aquaponics actually. So, you let them with some, a bit of salt. Uh, you don't want to put too much neither. You know, it depends on uh, the percentage. It can be 1% one or 1.5% 1 depends. I like to do it by eye and by taste. And you will see some uh, kind of uh, water coming out, you know, moisture coming out of the stainer. You see, it's going in my hand. This is a water coming out of the eggs because I put the salt. So leave it a little while like this, all the moisture is going out, not all right, <laughs> you still have plenty of moisture in the egg, but some moisture is coming out. After a while you can consume them. Here uh, you, you normally use a spoon or something to try them. You see how they look? They look quite nice. Beautiful, they're really nice. Leave it a bit longer. I still have some dropping. Can add a little bit more salt for my taste. See, I got this old uh, mustard pot. Now you can definitely wash it a little bit if you want. So you got all the extra salt and impurities that could have been on the egg that are falling down. You can now keep this for a good week. One option is to pasteurize it, but you don't want to cook the eggs. But um, if you are doing just for your family, if you just have a few trout in your aquaponic system, I don't recommend to pasteurize it. Just eat it when it's fresh. You eat it on a piece of bread, bread, butter, and it's just fantastic. It tastes amazing and that's so healthy, super healthy. So here you are, how to make your own uh, trout caviar. So now I want to show you another technique where the eggs will be slightly more firm. So first you will prepare a mix 
made out of water and salt. So the salt quantity can be 1 to 2% of the water quantity. And then you will dip the eggs, so the sieve containing the eggs, into this liquid. And you will leave it for 20 minutes. You want the eggs to soak a bit this, uh, this liquid, to load into sodium, into salt. After this time, you take your sieve out and you place it on top of a bowl. You want to let it drain for another 5 minutes. And after that, you are ready to consume your eggs or to put them in a pot and either pasteurize them or keep them in the fridge for a few days. So if you have friends who are interested by aquaponics, I believe this video will be useful and they will probably be very interested to produce trout caviar in their backyard. So feel free to share. And if you like the video, please give it a like. Now, what else can we do with trout eggs? I guess you see why I'm going. So stay tuned for the next video. Bye bye. This is beautiful.